it's time and thank you very much for waiting please i know the class was supposed to be at 3 30 so we just want to make it available for those of you who wouldn't be here by 3 30. so please if it's clashing with your class if it's clashing with any of your classes as of now you can attend the class you would have access to the recorded version and you you will be good to go please if after the class you have any question you can leave it under the comment section when you watch the recorded version or you let us know on the whatsapp platform we will respond to them Mm -hmm. And the background noise started, so I just have to mute some of you. Okay, so my name is Victoria. My name is Victoria Enchi, and I'm one of your. Um, sorry, some of you are so. There is background and. They didn't mute their audio, so I've, I have to mute all of you. Yes, yeah, so my name is Victoria, and I'm one of your, your tutors for this course. So today we are going to, as communicated early on, we are going to take session one and two for this week. The recorded version will be made available so you can access it anytime for those who join late, later on please if you have any comments or any question you can raise your hand or you leave it in the comment session after our first part you will respond to them please note that this is a tutorial okay it's it's a tutorial so I'm not going to do all the, I'm not going to do lecture. I'm not going to say everything, okay? I'm not going to be doing all the talking. You're all going to do the talking some. <laughs> You're going to do the talking some. And please, I've been where you are before. I know how it, it is. Some of you are pressured and some of you are disturbed. Please do not worry. If there is any concern academically, just let us know. But you, you only need to know how you would approach, approach us and how you would present your issue just so that you address all your concerns. Please do not feel, don't, don't put me more higher than you because I'm just human like you just that I have the opportunity to tutor you on this course. So please respect your colleagues. I'm going to respect each and everyone here. Do not exceed that boundary of respect that I'm going to give you. Okay, so please, anyone has a concern, anyone has a concern before? We get into the main lecture. Anyone has a concern? Please, someone just asked if there is a forum on Sakai, you need to respond to them. Go, it's I, I, as I earlier stated in the other video, forums are just like a discussion platform. So the lectures post forum on Sakai, you go there, you need to respond. You don't need the lecture. If the lecturer didn't want anybody to respond, Anka, it wouldn't be there. So go there and respond to it. You need to type. There was a there is a section that you can type. It's called start a conversation. So look for start a conversation. If you don't know how to navigate through the Sakai system, go to the YouTube channel and then check our video on that. Please, people are saying the line is breaking. Please let me know if you can 
still hear me? Yes, please, they count as part of your assessment. So please go there and respond to them. And instructions on either assignment, test, um, forum question, forum discussion, or in any test quiz or assignment or forum discussion has an instruction. So look, read the instructions that comes with the forum questions or assignment or test, because each of them has an instruction. Okay, so there is no concern. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, you have a concern, please. Unmute yourself and speak. Hello, Adam. Yes, please. Uh, like, I'm trying to ask that. Do you have an assignment, like assignment to do? I just joined this, like, uh, I just hey, Jeff. open for me with your assignment. Okay, thank you very much. So Jeff is asking if there is an assignment. If there is an assignment, please check Sakai. If there is any assignment for you, you would see it in Sakai. So open logging into Sakai, check your assignment session. If there is any assignment, you will be notified. You would see it there. Yeah, so people are confirming that there is no assignment for now. So Please, there is no assignment for now. If there is any assignment, you should check from Sakai. It will be displayed today. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you. Yes, yeah, so. After our first part, which will be session one, we would come back to the comment session and then respond to questions. If you have a, a question or any clarification to make, please leave it at the comment session and we would respond to them. I know most of you have gone through the session the slides and the video. So please, let's have this a very smooth discussion. So I'm locating my slide from session one, where we will start from. So the impact of information in society. Please, I am not going to lecture, as I said early on. It's, it needs to be an interactive session. So I'll be asking questions and please respond, be giving me feedback so that I know my people are with me. People of God, can you hear me? Please, is it, is it, am I clear? Okay. Yes, so the impact of information in society. So at the end of this session, Steph. Please attend to them. Yes, I've given her. Sorry, I've given her. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry for the interruption. At the end of this session, each, on ev each and everyone here should be able to describe how information is used in society 
to control and influence behavior, to be able to discuss how individuals differ in their ability to access and use information. Also, we should be able to explain how the use of information is changing in the world today. Information is dynamic, so it's, it changes with time. So we should be able to explain how the information changes in the world today. We will have three main topics under this part, which will be the daily encounters with information, information devices around the world and uses of information in society. Please look at these references. You can check them out from the library, BAM library preferably. When you get them, you would have further explanations to this topic that we are about treating. So please. Daily topic, daily encounters with information. See, when as humans, when we even wake up in the morning, we encounter information at any particular point of our, our life, our daily activities. So information is not something new to, to us. There are some things that we do, we don't even see them as information or even treat them as such, but it's part of, of it. So when we wake up from morning, we interact with information in different ways, different ways, orally, tactic, visually, gustatorily, and olfactorily. So let me break this down before someone comes to tell me I don't understand. When we say we wake up, uh, we interact with information in different ways. We talk about orally. Orally relates to the information that we hear from our ears. So with, with our ears, sorry, the information that we hear with our ears, that's Orally and gustatorily. That's as the information that we sense or the information that we taste. So let's say I, I have food, I've bought food, and I'm putting the food in my mouth. I'm eating, taking in the food. I would have a taste. I would, the food, I can tell whether the food is nice or it's not nice. So the sense of me tasting the food to identify whether or not it's nice, it's a way I've interacted with information. The third one, which is olfactorily, deals with smell. So information that we, we, we interact with information through our smell, our sense of smell. So let's say I'm seated here, as I'm here, there is a very bad, I, I, I have, I, I can smell some bad scent or odor. So how was I able to know this thing is smelling really bad? So in a way I've communicated, I've interacted with information through the smell or by my through my nostrils. The fourth one is a sense of touch. So if someone tells you you've, you've interacted with information in a tactical way, it means you've there is you've touched like you've had a few of the information. So this is it. I've, I've communicated, I want to talk to Kofi and I can't call Kofi because we are in a class. If I call Kofi, the lecturer will know I'm calling Kofi and it will distract or we are in an examination hall. If I call Kofi, the invigilator will know that I've called Kofi and they would know I want to cheat. So I would move forward a little and tap Kofi. So there has been a tap, a physical experience, a physical interaction with information. The last one, which is visually, is something that we, we, we are more used to. 
So something you see. So as I am here now, I can see Jeff putting on his lens. So I have interacted with information visually. Now I can also see Safo nodding his head. So I so nodding her head, Safo Susanna. I can see her nodding her head. So I have I I, I can tell what Safo is doing. Louisa also just came and I see what Louisa is doing. So these are ways that we interact with information that we don't even know that it's information that we are interacting with. So a person's daily information activities may involve transforming information from one format to another. So with any or all the ways I, I explained early on, you you know that in in a way, in each of them, there is something being communicated from a particular thing to another. So let's say the let's 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 use the sense of taste, for example. I picked food and I was taking it into my mind. It was food. But I was able to communicate to Kofi sit, seated beside me that Kofi, this food is not nice. So the info, but Kofi didn't taste the food. I did, but Kofi now knows that the food is not nice. So, so Kofi will not go to that other seller and buy the Kofi again. So in one way or the other, we communicate in, in our everyday activities, we transform information from one format to another. Let's take um, a, a painting, for instance. Someone has painted, th there is a, a painted picture of the University of Ghana, or let's say a bomb library, or a Jeff, someone, Jeff reading a book. When you pick the painting, you can, you'll be able to enter interpret and see that, oh, so this is Jeff reading a book or Jeff in front of a library or Jeff standing in front of BAM library. So you see with that, we've been able to inform you of what someone is doing. Yeah, so on a daily basis, information grows by leaps and bounds. So leaps and bounds means very quickly. So it's, it was used by William Shakespeare. So information grows very quickly with time. As I said earlier on information, it's not static, it's dynamic. So at every point in time, information would be growing. So let's look at some statistics here. In 2002, the information that was produced was equivalent to uh, information that was produced in 2002. Let's look at the statistics as indicated in the slide. So they had an equivalence of 37,000 libraries and their collection size, the information that was produced, sorry, information that was produced in 2002 was equivalent to 37,000 libraries. And it was approximately 800 megabytes of information for each person in the world. So let's say, I know most of you were born in 2002. So after 2002, the information that was, that you were using or I was using in 2002 was approximately 800 megabytes. But as of now, you see, let's look at 2016. As of 2016, it was 20 as a bite. So you can compare 2012 to 2006, then you would know, so 2002 to 2006, then you would know that there has been a difference. There has been a vast difference between 2002 and 2004. So information is, not static, it's dynamic. So it's, it goes with 
time and it, it goes very quickly. The next thing we, we will look at, please know the years and the information produced. So look at the data, these statistics in slide nine, in slide 10 and in slide 10 and in slide 11. Please note all of them. We will talk briefly about information devices and its uses. So in 2016, it was very common for individuals to get access to, from 2006, sorry, to get access to information devices. Now there, is, there are so many information devices at, that people have access to. People even have more than two information devices that at their disposal. So we had clock, there is watch, there is radio, television, printer, telephone, fax machines, calculator, and all that. All these were used to help human interact, have an interaction with information. So if I have a telephone, as of 2006, if I have I had a telephone, I would be able to pick the telephone and call Fidels. That hello, Fidels, I need you to submit this assignment. Or hello, amazing, I need you to complete this test or submit this on my behalf. So with these devices, we were able to communicate with each other. So if I pick a book. I picked a book for preservation. Let's say I picked this book. When I open the book, I would be able to identify that, oh, so this is the definition for preservation or this is the definition for information. All of you getting access to this platform or this class right now was because there was an information communicated to you through Sakai or through WhatsApp. So there was a medium through which the information was communicated and there was a device used to communicate the information. So I sent, it was sent via with a phone. You got, you received it with your phone. So you've used a device to access information or interact with, have an interaction with information. So all these are some of the devices that were used for information services. Please let me give you a distinction between the information devices and the information services. The devices are the tools that we used. So you see, you can see computer, you can see a telephone, you can see a printer, you can see a television, you can see cell phone, you can see a scanner, a fax machine, a calculator, a camera. So that is the information devices and the information studies, information services here, you can see telephone service. You can see a satellite radio subscription. So I need information on, I need on COVID-19, I need updates on COVID-19. You can pick your phone and then dial star one, this is star five zero five ash on your phone then you'll be able to subscribe to updates from the Ghana Health Service. That way, so every morning when you wake up, you get a notification from Ghana Health Service telling you that you should wear your face mask. You get an update from Ghana Health Service telling you you should wash your hands under running water with soap. So that is the services that the information services that you are gaining. So you have to subscribe to a, a service and you are getting it. So the information device is what the tools that you would use. And the services are what you get some, most of the time upon request. So those services are mostly gained, used 
through the information devices. If you don't have a phone, how can you subscribe to MTN mobile? How can you register for MTN mobile money when you don't have a mobile phone and a SIM card? So when you have the information device, you would get the information, you have information services. So there is a simple question here that I would want all of you to look at. Rebecca, I can see you've started. Please hold on. Rebecca has started drawing the screen. I believe all of you can see. So I'll just remove her so that we can continue with our class peacefully. Okay, so please let's look at the sample question. I would want all of you to either leave a comment or respond in the comment section or you will mute yourself and let us have you, your, your, your thoughts on it. The conduct of daily life is affected by the number of different information devices for sending, receiving, recording, tracking and manipulating information one owes or can access. Which of the information devices that you use would have been available to your parents when they were young? So, the, which of the information devices that you use would have been available to your parents when they were your age? And how does having the information devices that you're using make your life different from this? So, please let me have you. Let's go back so that I, I have you. Please, who, who would want to respond? Anyone wants to respond? Okay, Rodney, please let's have you mute or mute yourself and let's have you please. Mamiama. Mama. Please let, let's have you. You said you would want to. Okay, so someone is saying radio. So, okay, Mamiama too is saying mobile phone. So, Mamiama, please tell us how different the mobile phone has made your, how different has the, the mobile phone has made you from your parents. Please, whichever response that you leave, you would explain. So please get ready. Okay, I think my mama is not ready. Yes. Hello, madam. Yes, please. Yeah, madam, please. Um, the device I'll choose is telephone. Okay, so how um, has telephone made your life different from that of your parents? Madam, and in the olden days, mm -hmm. they weren't, you see, with the telephone, they weren't um, able to access the internet with their telephones mm -hmm. because this was like in a form of, like, let's see, yam, yam. <laughs> but now we have smartphones that we use around so it's like it helps us um access the internet easily okay okay thank you very much thank you Nan nanada Kuma also shares the same view with edward thank you very much yes anyone with further what way Ah, not loving the camera. And someone. Is any other? No, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to mute all of you because people still have background noise. David. David, please unmute yourself and let's have you.
Hello, David. Okay, so there is, yes, Mami Ama has given her. You see, please speak. You see, please speak. Yes, madam. Yes, please, let's have you. Which of the devices would you have gone in for? I will choose the mobile phone. Okay, so you're also choosing mobile phone. Why, why mobile phone? Yes. And I'll choose, it, I'll choose it in the sense that it, it has helped in making communication very easy. Okay. And like my colleague earlier said, we get easy access to the internet anywhere, every time. Okay, thank and you. As compared to... Uh -huh, I'm listening to you. Yeah, I was saying as compared to uh, our parents during their time, it was very difficult to have access to the internet and to share information. Maybe if someone stays here in Accra and wanted to pass on something to someone in the village, the person will have to write a letter. But now mobile phone has made it easier. You can sit in Accra here and just place a call and pass on the information to the person. So I'll take the mobile phone. Okay. So thank you, Nana Mahas. Nanama has also given her. Nanama has also explained further. So she is she is actually having. He said, if, "Let me read so that all of you would get it." If the mobile phone was was available, that was was available for her parents as at the time as at now that she is having access to. Her mom wouldn't have worked miles to his, his her uncle's place at Kumasi to let them know there is an emergency they need to attend to. So thank you very much. Thank Jeff would want to, I, all of you are contributing. Your responses are very good. And please, I don't want anybody to say mobile phone again. I want someone with a different response. We've had a response for mobile phones. So anyone else with a different response, please let if I'm letting you in, it means you're giving us a different response. So Jeff, Jeff, give us a different response. Don't choose mobile phone. Okay, madam. Uh, I'm saying television. I'm on television. Okay, okay. Okay, as as compared to the television, like you can get information through the news, yeah, yeah and some sorts of inform uh, entertainment, yeah, and yeah. Okay, can get thank you very much, news. Jeff. Yeah, that's true. So you with television, you get access to information. You you get to, through the news. Yes, mm -hmm. Jeff. Jeff made us aware of that. If you have a television, you would know that you get to know what is happening. You can, when it's seven o'clock, you can turn on your television and then watch, you, you will get news in brief from TV3 and you get to know what is happening in the country. You, but then at that time, when your parents were your age, they weren't getting access to that. David also said television. Nanada Akuma said laptop. So Nanada Akuma, please let us know why you are saying laptop? Okay, so thanks. Most of you have said it all, and we will continue to take the next one. So, as you said. With all these devices at our disposal, we, we are able to access information that our parents were not having access to. With laptops, we were able to, with our laptop, we can, we are now having a class that our parents didn't have access to. They had to walk sometimes miles before they get to the classroom. Now we have a classroom online. 
with our phones to we get access to the subscriptions that they were sometimes having it on papers earlier and more faster. So information is able to travel faster than they used to. So would you all agree that information is growing faster than it used to? Information is growing more quickly and it's, it's growing more quickly and easier. And it can be accessed faster as compared to our parents. Please let me have your view. Okay. Hey, someone said information will be asked. Yeah, so Nana is giving explanation for why she said laptop. Mm -hmm. Let me read that one out so that we, we will continue from there. So with laptop, we can learn online as we are doing now. And we can learn online as we are doing now. We can, you, during the old days, so during the, her parents' days, they used to walk to the classroom and sometimes getting information and indication isn't fast as it, it is now. So you see the information devices and services has made accessing information very easy for us. This critical thinking assignment, I don't, Uh, she Oh, sorry, I didn't know I was muted. So um, this slide, this session gives you information on what the information devices and the information services that we, that we talked about earlier. So it, it gives you further information and statistics on each information service or information devices. So you see cell phone subscription, broadband penetration. Current portable MP3 data. So it's giving you details on the information devices and the information services that we have access to. And one important thing I would want you to, we've, I think we've already talked about it because now all of you have agreed that information is going very quickly. So now information, providing information or accessing information is more easier and even faster. So you can get music. You don't have to wait until there is a music show before you go and listen, go and see the artists and listen to watch the show or listen to it. You can download movies. You can, those with Apple products, you can, you have access to your Apple iTunes where you will download or access your mu music, your cell phones and other things. Now you don't have to keep leave your cell phone in the house and then travel outside the country. You can put your phone, your cell phone on, on air airplane mode or flight mode, just so that you'll be secure. So information is growing very quickly and we all have attested to the fact that fact. So this is the end of the first two topics. Let's zoom in into knowing the uses of information in our society. Information is very, very useful and it's indispensable. You can't take information out of everything that you're doing because that is what you need before you can even know what you need to do. So information plays a very key role in our society. So information is a powerful and indispensable factor in operation and functioning of society. It is used as an instrument of influence and control in the lives of individuals and citizens. 
it also strengthens strengthens relationship among nations. So let's look at information being an instrument of influence and control. So there is a new product that that needs to come out. That, um, let's say specialized needs wants to introduce a new flavored drink or something and they just brought the drink no advertisement no one talking about it how will we get to know there is a new flavored drink from specialized nobody will get to know right so it is they, they would they would undertake a promotion exercise where they would do a market, they will use a marketing strategy where they will advertise the product. When they advertise the product, you would see on television, I would hear from radio station, I would see banners or posters of it around where I live. So that way, I will be able to say that, oh, so there is a new product from, there is a new product from Specialized. Then it would influence me to buy. So the advert or the, the advert contains information. So the information is from the advert. I got the information by listening to the radio station that specialized has introduced a new flavored drink. So I am going to buy it because I had it. I had information about it. If you don't have any information about it, you wouldn't be able to assess the product. You wouldn't even know that there is something. So you see how information has influenced me to buy the new flavored drink from Specialized. Yes, and information also makes other resources available for economic production. You would only get to know there is an information that we have gas or we have, we have oil in the country when there is an information. So without someone telling you or the ministry in charge informing vegan is that this is the amount of revenue we generated from just this sector this year, none of us would know. Until the, that information is published or made known to us, we wouldn't know. So information influences not just our individual lives, but then a country as a whole. It influences the decision that we take as a country and as individuals. Okay, Henry, I've seen your hands up. Please let's have you unmute yourself and let's have you. Okay, um, I was talking about the device. Yes, madam. We are listening to you, please. Yes, I was talking about the device. You see, I would probably choose, let's say, watch or clock. I am choosing that because in the olden days, you see, our grandparents used to depend on the cock to crow before okay. they realized the time. So if the cock crows, let's say 12 p.m., that is where they realized that maybe they are in the farm and they need to go home because the sun is about to set. But currently we have watches and clocks, which makes it easy for us to realize that right now it is three o'clock and I have to be here or the other place. So I think watch too has been one of the information devices that is helping us very well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's, that's true. So clock or watch, it's also, an essential device that helps us know what time it is. So let's talk about in politics. You see, information plays a very vital role. As I said, it's indispensable. So there is no way that you will not need information for anything that you do. So it's used to influence our behavior. If the MPP is coming to tell you this. NDC is coming to tell you this. PPP is coming to tell you this. Or let's say party A, party B, party C. Everybody is telling you something. 
it is what each party will tell you that would influence who you are voting for. So NPP is telling me they will give me free SHS. NDC is telling me they would they would do 50-50 for tertiary institutions. So based on what the two of the two parties informed me, the information I got from the two parties, it would influence my behavior on how who I should vote for. So it would it might change my voting pattern or I would maintain it, depending on the information part A or part B will give you. It also help information would help shape public opinions on national issues. So we keep on giving you the Ministry of Information, keep on updating you on what is happening in the country. So you'd want to, it would shape what you think about a particular policy or a particular issue that is being talked about. So recently, I, Honorable Ayariga petitioned parliament that fees for tertiary institution for this academic year should be waived of or suspended. Nobody would have talked about it if it wasn't, we weren't informed or we didn't have access to. So for those of you that followed the proceedings on that particular petition and all that, you will know what, you, you would know how you would speak about that petition anytime you are given the platform to talk about it. So you will know what to say about that petition when you are called. So you have information on that petition. That is why you are able to say something about it. So information also helps sustain or it depends relationships among nations. So you see, we have unions, let's say AU, African Union, we have European Union, we have United Nations. All of these unions are able to communicate with each other and arrive at a consensus or come to an agreement on something because they were able to get access to the information and share it among themselves for the benefit of each country or each member state. So if depending on what you communicate to your colleague member states in the union, or depending on the kind of communication or interaction that you have with information on the, with the other nations in the union, you would be able to tell, you will be able to either strengthen or weaken your relationship with the union. So information, once again, is very vital. In, everything that we do. So information is also important in the entertainment industry, the films, the sporting activities, music. Now everything can even be streamed online or you would even have access that you would be informed that Potokwen has, has a match to play or Barcelona and Juventus have there's a match for Barcelona, between Barcelona and Juventus. That is when you'll be able to know whether you are watching or you are not watching. If it's a, something you need to pay for, you would pay. You will know whether you have to go and bet or you will not bet, whether you are losing or you are not losing. All this would be accessed when you have information. So if there is no information, nothing crucial can be done. I don't have information to go to class at Santa I don't have information to watch, watch this this live stream this much, I can't stream. I don't have information to watch this premiere, I can't. So information once again is indispensable and very vital. Yes, so the rapidity of information dissemination. See, information needs to be disseminated quickly also, just so that you would have access. It, it will meet the needs of the information user. So this, there is a loss of time question. The time question refers to the extra time or let's say the additional time you add to the budgeted time you, you have assigned for a particular assignment. So let's use an example that 
there is a class at 1.30. It's online, students will have to join. If I told the student the class is at 1.30, you will end up starting the class at 1.50 or 2 o'clock. So let's say we send the link to the student. After the link has been sent, 1 o'clock. By the time students finish joining, it should be 1.30. So there was, an, there was no loss of time crossing. There have, we've been, an extra time has been allocated just so that the class will start exactly at 1.30. So if the class is starting at 1.30 and the link is shared at 1.30, by the time students will have access to the link and even join, we've lost, we've lost some time already. And by that, that time could have been used for something else. So let's say, you, you need to visit the hospital, see the doctor. It's an emergency at two o'clock. An emergency at two o'clock. You need to see the doctor at two o'clock. And you set your alarm at two o'clock. And it's two o'clock. You are now moving. You are now moving to your house, to the hospital. By the time you get there, the doctor will be gone. And what, what needs to happen to you might have already happened to you because the doctor is not there to attend to you. But if you have two o'clock appointments, you set your time at 1.30 or 1.50, you know that 1.50, there is a reminder that you have a class at two o'clock. So at 1.50, you have a 10 minute interval just so that you don't, you, you, you don't have, you don't miss your appointment. The other side of this is that there is a program which is supposed to start at nine and end at 10 o'clock. You know definitely there might be a delay. So instead of the 10 o'clock ending, whichever preparations or arrangement that you need to make, you make it at you make it end at 10:30. So the program is starting at nine and it's ended at 10:30. So even if you don't start early and you start at 9.30, you'll be able to still, you, you'll be within your one hour interval and still end at 10.30, so that no one has lost. So an example of it is the president, the former president who died because they, he wasn't able to get to the hospital on time. So the ambulance didn't come early and he didn't get to on time and we lost him. So all the time, they, they, there is a need for you to have budgeted time, either extra or before. So you should know how you would manage that just so that you get the information communicated very quickly and your needs be attended to. So once again, please go through this. You can go to the BAM library and get these reading materials. You can have further studies on your own. Please, let's pick some questions. If you have any questions, let's go to the chat room before we come and continue with session two. Please, if you have any questions, do let us know so that we respond to it. Yes, the class will be recorded. It's been recorded now. So the recorded version will be sent to you. Please let us know. Okay, Adam, you have a question. You see, please be ready after Adam, you would speak. Adam, please unmute yourself and then let's Hello, Adam. Hello, Adam. Hello, Madam. Adam. Yes, please. Adam, we are listening to you. Adam, we are listening to you, please. Madam. Madam. Yes, please. Madam. Please, I want to ask whether this lecture is for only this week. Yes, please. Just it's for week. all the groups. 
I mean yes. all the groups. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. You're welcome. You see, please, let's have your question. You can also drop your question in <coughs> at the comment section. We'll respond to you. Yeah, madam. Yes, please. Uh, please, I had issues with my connection, so I didn't get it at the uh, okay. uh, rapidity of the lesson. So I wanted you to go okay, over the, the recorded version will be sent so that you, you go through it, but I will quickly run you through okay. it again. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Millicent, please let's have you. Hello, Millicent. Madam, please, I didn't get the lock. Madam, yes, please. Please, I didn't get, the, I didn't get the loss of time cushion. I didn't get that part very well. Can you please? Okay, so talk about that again. Yes, let me take us through it again. Thank you. You see, sometimes people miss. Uh, incidents happen or accidents happen because the the information was not communicated early or was not communicated on time. So people miss classes or people die as a result of information not being given on time. So whenever an information needs to be done, needs to be given, it needs to be given before or preparations need to be done before or a time allocated after the, time, the deadline or whichever the actual time that it needs to be communicated. So let me use the example again. We need an ambulance to be here at 10 o'clock. We know there might be traffic on the way. So let's call the ambulance at 8 o'clock and let the ambulance know he needs to be, the driver needs to get here with the ambulance at 9.30 or 9.45. That's where when the ambulance gets here at 9.45, we are good to go. But when there is, a, there is traffic on the way and the ambulance is unable to get here at 9.45, because the actual time is 10 o'clock, the ambulance would get here, let's say, 9.50 or 9.55 instead of the 9.45 that was given to the driver. So there is traffic. He told the ambulance driver to get here at 9.45. But the actual time that we need the ambulance to be here is 10 o'clock. Now, there is traffic, so the ambulance driver couldn't get here at 9.45. But he gets here with the ambulance at 9.55. Is there any loss? No. Because you need the ambulance to be here at 10 o'clock. But you see at 9.55, because there, is, there was traffic on the way. That way, you don't get to lose anything. So most of the time, give it before, or you allocate extra time in situations where just to cover unforeseen circumstances. Yes, yeah, so Millicent, I hope you are OK. Okay, the Susan, please let's have you after that. We'll take the, the comments in the chat session. Susan, please let's have your question. Okay, madam. Madam, please, I still don't understand the visually part, the definition of visually. Okay, let me let me take that again. And please let me first let's have you, Susan. I will explain that for you once again. Susan, let's have you. Hey, sorry, Priscilla, let's have you. Hello, Priscilla. Okay, Priscilla is not ready. Eugene, let's have you. Hello. Yes, please, we are listening to you. Um, I have a question. Okay. So if I honestly think that the best 
information device will be a human being itself. Hello. Yes, we are listening to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. But please repeat the question. I didn't get you. No, it's like it's a like it's just a suggestion, but oh, okay, it's, a, okay. it's a question if if you don't think so. Oh, okay. So please repeat your comment so that I can get you right. And I was saying that mm -hmm. I honestly think the best information device would be the human being itself. Why are you saying that? Please explain to us. Because if it's if there's a television and you're watching news, mm -hmm. it's if someone that's reading the news. <laughs> and the fastest way for news to travel actually is through people. Mm -hmm. For information to travel is through people. Yeah, so okay, I get you. Let me let me give you one explanation. As you move on, you would mm. get to know the medium through which information is communicated. There is a medium, there is a sender, and there is a receiver. So the one the yeah. medium through which is being communicated will be the human being reading the news to the receiver. Yes. You, do you get it? <laughs> So it's not it's not a, a device, but then but if, it still plays role, it still have a role to play in giving information or someone receiving an information. So technically the device that they watch um television. Yes, yes. Watch the device that are used, used to assess them or receive information. Yeah, so Oh, okay. So, oh. yeah, so Prisla, you said uh, visually. So, you see, there is an information that you see with your eyes. It's mostly, you mostly see them with your eyes. So, that's when I fit the book I am reading. So, it's my eye that is, I'm using to see what I am reading. So I can see Josephine trying to write and then nodding her head. So I, it's, I've, I've been able to communicate with Josephine to see that this is what Josephine is doing right now. I can see Susanna smiling. So it's with my eye that I can see Susanna smiling. So if Josephine is to ask me, what is Susan, Susan doing? Oh, Susanna is smiling. So you see, I've been able to tell her what Susanna is doing because I see what Susanna is doing. I can see Eugene walking. So if um, Kwao is to ask me what Eugene is doing, then I would see that, oh, Eugene is walking. So then I tell Kwao, Kwao, Eugene is walking. I've been able to see what Eugene is doing and inform Kwao that this is what Eugene is doing. Please, I hope it's clear. Yeah, so please, I'm taking the, oh, Ed, Edward, you also have a question. Please unmute yourself and, and uh, um, Madam, please, um, my, um, my data got finished, but now I'm back. Okay, Madam, okay. please, you see, with the information and um, information devices and services, mm -hmm. you see, we have some barriers of communication. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Madam, so um, a friend of mine said um, human, it's the best device for um, device for communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please, are you done? Okay, so as you move on, you're hey, madam, please. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to you, please. And um, madam, that one I don't get it because example is like an um, individual talking to um, someone who is like a white person. And and so, you see there the is a understand it. so you see yeah. there will be and that will be information barrier a communication barrier so the every right. man is unable to communicate to the britain man british man because yes. the the every man is speaking every and the man is not getting yes. it so there there has been no communication that has to do with communication and you would get there 
as well. Thank you. Okay, Eugene, we have a question. Please let's have you. Hello, Eugene. Okay, I think Eugene is not ready. So, Hello. yes, Eugene, you have a question. Let's have you. Yeah, but um, please, Edward was talking about um, language barriers, <laughs> um, hindering the yeah. communication of information. Yeah. But also, the device is not everyone that gets access to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. But you can't, yes, so it doesn't still make it. Um, less reliable. Yeah, you, you, yes. It, you do also have a point. It's not everybody that will have access to the devices that are used for informing people, or used for communication. Definitely, it's not everybody that has. We talked that someone mentioned Yam. People so have Yam, they don't have smartphones. So it's not all of them that can have access to it. So that one too is one forms part of one of your sessions, and I believe you would get there. We would explain further when we get there. Okay, Irene, please let's have your question. Hello, Irene. Yes, madam. Yes, please let's have your question. And Madam, please, someone made mention of watch as an information tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't understand the fact that watch, like, watch gives information because, for instance, television gives us news or things concerning the, like, the things going on around us. But watch, I don't see watch to be an information tool. So I want to know if it is okay. really an information too. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Irene. So watch or clock as you see there is also an information device. I think he has explained that I, I it seems you 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 didn't get it. Let me explain that. Irene, that was not so uh, You see, in the olden days, that was in comparison with our parents, like our parents, what we have now that they didn't have and how different that is making our life from this. So you see, in the old, olden days, they would have to wait for the cock to crow, like crow, 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 before they can, they would know that, oh, it's 12 o'clock or is this particular time? Let me go, let me leave the farm and go. Or they will have to wait, study this, the, the weather, get to know, oh, the sun is down. Or it's, the sun is very hot now. Let's leave and go to the house and then get something to eat. They have to wait for there to be light in the morning before they would know that, oh, are they or something? or the cock will call in the morning before they will get to know. But now you have a watch. When it's 1.30, you will get to know it's 1.30. When it's 2.30, you get to know it's 2.30. So you get to know what you will have to do. Please, are we okay? Yeah, so please let's take the... Okay, someone is saying I should go through the visually again. Let me do that quickly and then we'll brush, we'll run through the session two and we, we will be done. So the visually, it's letting, it would inform you, you interact with information visually. When we are, you see what someone is doing or you are informed by what someone is doing. So I can see Eugene working. Now Eugene, Eugene is working. Kwao, when Kwao asks me what Eugene is doing, I can tell Kwao that Kwao, Eugene is working. Now I can see Josephine rubbing her hands on her face, though it's not good for COVID-19 safety protocols. She's still doing it. Josephine, stop. Observe COVID-19 protocols. 
So when Eugene asks me what Josephine is doing, I'll be able to tell Eugene that Josephine is rubbing her hands on her feet. So it's, I was able to inform Eugene or I was informed of what Josephine is doing because I see what Josephine is doing. Now I am speaking. If Andrew asks any of you what Victoria is doing, the response would be that Victoria is talking or speaking. You were able to tell Andrew what Victoria is doing because you, you see what Victoria is doing. Please let me know if it's okay. Let's, let's move on to the last pattern. You will be done. So I'm sharing the screen with you just so that you'll be able to follow the definitions and types of information. This one, I know you all have access to the video. Please, if you do not have access to the video, please check your WhatsApp platform. You would see it or go to YouTube and type INFS 111 lecture videos. You will see it there. So this is not going, there will not be more talking on this because you have access to the slides, you have access to the videos, which explains it. So we will be taking more questions on this session than the talking from my side. So this is the overview of this session. You have been exposed to all sorts of information. We use information for different purposes. For example, you read the newspaper for information, you read a textbook to gain knowledge, and you inform someone about a project to be undertaken. But do you know that there are different types of information? So that is what you are going to learn in this session, the types of information and the sources of the information. So when you say types of information, where the information, what is what type of so type of information we have, you should be able to distinguish between the type of information that we have. When we say the source of information, that is where the information is coming from. So briefly, information doesn't have one definition. You, you don't have a particular definition for information. So, so many scholars have defined information that I would just read two of them for you and you would have to, you, you, you would also have to give me a definition upon what you learned from the slides, from watching the video and from reading the slides, get your definition of information. I'll be asking you to put that one down for me. So Porat defines information as data that has been organized and communicated. International Standard Organization also define information as a human assign as the meaning a human assigns to data by means of the human conversion used in the representation. So these are some of the definitions. We have so many definitions of information. I would define information as a data that has been collected and process to give a meaningful and give a meaningful information to the user or an information that has been processed to satisfy the need of the information user so before you'll be able to define you see i've asked you all to define information i would ask you you can eat, when you finish with your definition, you can drop it at the comment section or you hold on when we get to that part, you just give us your information. So information before you define information, you should know what it entails. And that will take us into the information pyramid. So generally information is best defined in the context of what is described as the information pyramid. So this is what information entails the information pyramid. It represents a quantum in which information develops from symbols to data to information to knowledge and finally acquisition of wisdom through knowledge. 
So information includes data. Uh, so information includes symbols, data, and it progresses to give you the information. You get, you gain knowledge from it. And when it's applied, you acquire wisdom. So this is the information pyramid as illustrated. This is the information pyramid. So this is the information pyramid. This is the information pyramid. From symbols to data, to information, then to knowledge and wisdom. So we have A, B, we have alphabet, A, B, C. We have asterisk, we have dollar signs and all that. So I want, uh, what is, I have A. I have M and I have A. So when I put A, symbol A, symbol M, I alphabet A, alphabet M and alphabet A together, I get AMA. So now there is AMA. If I come to say AMA is sick, I put, so I'm putting alphabets together to get data, AMA, data is and data sick. Now I put those things together to give you, AMA is sick. So now AMA is sick as an information. But who am I giving that information to? I'm telling Josephine that AMA is sick. So now Josephine then goes to AMA's place to say, oh, AMA, what is wrong with you? She has taken an action. Like Josephine has a knowledge of AMA is sick. So now if someone asks Justin, oh, where is your friend Amma? Amma is sick. So Justin goes to Amma's place. She has made use of the information I gave her. Now she went to visit Amma because I gave her information that Amma is sick. So she has used the information to gain something. So now there is knowledge. And now I'm be taken to the hospital and like there is there is an end product of the action just for to that is wisdom. So you can have the information if you don't make use of it, you just have the information. You've not gotten to the knowledge part of the pyramid yet. So generally, usually the pyramid is like this. The pyramid looks like this. It looks like it's, it's in a triangular form where you see so many having symbols, so many people having data and quite a number of people have information. But just a few of those with information can gain knowledge out of it. And a very handful, a handful of people just get to the wisdom part of the pyramid because not all of you process uses the information and get the end product of it after you have the information. So let's continue. Categories of information, tangible and intangible. So the tangible, you would see the difference between the tangible and intangible. So the tangible you can see and touch, like something, it's, it's regarded as a thing. The intangible, it's regarded as a process, so you cannot see. So when you process it, it's seen as knowledge. So you see, you can when you process the information that has been given to you and you act on it, that's why you see you get to the knowledge part of the pyramid. So we, we've gotten to where you tell me what your definition for information is. So I don't know anything about information studies. I've not been a student of information studies before. I don't even know what information studies is. But now I want you, as an information studies student, to tell me what information is. I don't know anything about it. What are you going to say? OK, so Andrew is saying information is the data that has been organized and can solve uncertainty. Wow. Francisca is saying information is a well-processed data that is communicated. Okay, 
and Cesca, that's great. I really saying information as a process data, which is meaningful. Okay, that's also okay. Information is the record data, which is resolved. Record data. Were you trying to, Nana, Naya? Is it a recorded data or record data? Information is a record data. Let's proceed. You address all these ones. Barbara, um, Lu Louisa is saying information is the data that has been organized and communicated. Information to me is a body of process data that is used to clear misconceptions and also make decisions. Okay, that's also great. So you see, information is a, a message or data which is passed on to someone to clear uncertainties. Information can also be in form of knowledge acquisition. Okay, this the, the responses are great. The responses are really great and impressive. Information is data which has been manipulated and communicated to inform. You've so used inform, which is part of information. Information is bringing two or more characteristics and making two or more characters and making it meaningful to a recipient. Oh, that's very fine. Your, your username is iPhone. So iPhone, that's also great. Jamena definition is that information is a data collected process in order to acquire knowledge. Okay, 33 prototype. <laughs> Please, your usernames are killing me. Information is a collection of raw data, raw facts like numbers, symbols, etc. that has been processed to a meaningful result that is transferred from a sender to a receiver. Okay, thank you all very much. Your, def your definitions are very, very great. But please, in defining information, if you want to write your own definition, you should know that it's a data. So it has a process. It moves from the data at the symbol, it becomes data, it's been processed, then you get the information. When it gets to it, it gets to the user and all that. So all of you saying from sender to receiver, telling me the medium being a data and all that, that is all good. And it's fantastic. The definitions are fantastic. So you need to also tell me in, in our next class, you will have to tell me, or what, tell me the difference or the relationship between symbol, data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. So that would be the knowledge pyramid. You see, it comes from, it starts from symbol, it forms data to information, and knowledge, then you gain wisdom from there. So you can also leave in a comment section what um, your, your, your relation, the relationship between the symbol data and information. Let's just take symbol data and information for now. You can leave it in a comment section, you look at it then. So yeah. public domain information, this is it. Please watch the video and make sure you don't misinform yourself. Watch the video with the slide, uses of public libraries and private information. So public information, private information, which is also personal information. Let's talk about the sources of information briefly, then we'll take your question on session two, which you have the video and the slides. So we have primary sources of information and secondary sources of information. The primary sources are usually given by, are collected first hand. So they are usually taken from the creator of the information. So I have, let's say, I produce, no, let's use the specialized new, the newly flav new flavor that they introduced. We want to know how it was made. So who would be the first person we would go to? We go to the specialized, specialized factory. We'll see the, the 
the one in charge of operation. So we see the one who produced that. So the person will give us the first hand information on how it's done. Before we that we went to ask the question can in turn inform our mate that when we went to specialize the pool, this was what they told us that it is done. So we picking the information that was picked from the specialized depot is a primary info, it's a primary source. You picked it from the main source. We telling our colleagues that this is what the this is how they make the specialized print. It's a secondary source. So we picked it from them. So we got the primary source and we are giving it to our colleagues. So they are getting it from a secondary source. So usually the main person or the first, the real owner or the actual user or creator, creator of the information that we need gives us the primary source. Any third party that comes in is the secondary source. And it's secondary, so getting information from secondary sources are very easy and common. So in a research observation experiment survey, subjective est estimation, all these forms part of primary sources. So you get the explanation for exper experiments, observation, survey, everything. So let's look at the secondary information also. So there are problems also that comes with problems that comes with the sources of information. As any other system, there is a good side and a bad side. So you need for secondary sources, it's sometimes quite difficult to validate the sources whether it's reliable or it's actually you cannot whether you can actually rely on the information whether it's accurate or it's that's the true reflection of what the, you got the, the primary information is actually is so if you don't get usually if you don't get the primary information you'll have to get a secondary information from someone so you don't know whether some that the someone you are getting the secondary information for has given you the actual information. So your ESA president can put it on the WhatsApp platform that the souvenirs the souvenirs are ready. Or let's say they tell you your exercise those who don't have their exercise book and pens or no smart should come for it. Then you don't you decide not to read from the platform. You decide not to read what your president posted on the page. You wait for your friend Yuji to come and tell you. So when Yuji came to tell Prince, oh, Yuji, this was what Yuji said. Charlie Prince, they are saying that we should come for our souvenir. And we should come for our exercise book and pen and sketcher and and no smart. Please listen to the words I'm using carefully. You will know that when Eugene was telling Prince, he added something to it. There was no sticker in the community, but Eugene said sticker. And then Prince is also going to tell Andrew that, oh, Andrew, Charlie, you just said, they said we should come for our souvenirs, so our books and things. Books and what? Was that what the president posted on the page? You see there too, there has been something left out. And Andrew goes to tell Presla that, oh, Presla, they said this, this, this. So as the information is being communicated on a secondary level, some things are being left out gradually. Some things are being left out and some are being added. So by the time the last person will get the information, then they've either added so many things that was not in the communique, or they've removed so many things out of what was in the communique. So the last person, Kofi will get, be the last person to get the information. And then Kofi will get here. He, when he gets here, he'll come and tell the president that they said, you come for this, 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 and this. Meanwhile, 
That was not what the president stated. So it's always good to get it from the primary source, just that it's a little difficult getting it from the primary source. So please let's have your questions. This comes, this takes us to the end of session two. So we've covered session one and two. You already have access to the slides and you have access to the video. So I am very good. You, I'm, I'm very sure you've gone through and you might have some questions, you need some clarifications. So please let us know so that you would share our thoughts on that. So Eugene, you have something to say. Let me unmute yourself and let's have you, please. So unmute yourself. Hello, Eugene. Yeah, Hello. Yes, please let's have you. Hello, Eugene, can you hear us? Yes, I need to. Yeah, I can hear you right now. Okay, so please speak. The problems. Come again. Please speak on the problem. Yes, please watch the video. You have the video at your disposal. If you don't have the video, go to YouTube and type INFS 111. Uh, lecture video. Please watch that and read the slides. We can we will address that. We will address that the moment we the, in, in our next meeting. Yes, sorry. Yeah, so someone is asking for the difference between the symbol and the data. So see, you see, let me use the message that you type for you. So you see, you type. Yeah, so you've typed, please, what's the difference between symbols and data? So you see, there is a P. P is an alphabet. There is L, there is E, there is A, there is S, there is E. So they are alphabets. Alphabets can also be classified as symbols because they don't make any meaning. When you write A, what is A? When you put a question mark, what is a question mark? But when you write, hello, how are you? When you write, how are you? There is a question mark. So you've put in alphabets together. You've put in alphabets together and you've added a question mark, which is also a symbol. So the alphabets are also symbols and you put putting them together. So see, when you put the alphabets together, like please, when you put the alphabet together, like please, P, you've put in P, L, E, alphabet P, alphabet L, alphabet E, alphabet A, alphabet S and alphabet E together, you get please. But what is please? Please means nothing. So I'm saying, please, Buama, or please. So let's say when I just started the class, I said, please, what is happening? When I said the please, nobody would understand the please because nobody knows what please means. So please is the alphabet P, L, E, A, S that has been put together. So that is please. And that gives you data because it doesn't make any meaning. When I push those data, to, so many data together, like, please, Buama, I sit down, or please, Buama, put on your nose marks. It's making a meaning. So I'm putting the letters together to give you the meaning. Okay, so please, meaning symbols are just alphabet or numbers. Alphabet numbers, symbols, uh, alphabet numbers, See the sign, all the signs, they are all symbols. Alphabet number A to Z, one to infinity, all the question marks and the signs that you use on your keypad, they are all symbols. Yes, information is a collection of data, but not just a collection of data. When you get the data, it needs to go through a process to, to give meaning. When it gives meaning, 
that is when it becomes it, it becomes information. Please, I'm reading most of the questions from the chat room so that I so I read and then give the responses when when it comes. So I will still be reading in the next 10 minutes. If there is no question there, we, we would end. Okay, Edward, you have a question. Please hold on. Let me unmute you so that you let us have your question. Edmond, uh, Edward, please speak. Yeah, yes, Madam, can you hear me? Madam? Yes, we are listening Hello, to you. Ma uh, Madam, please, please, you explain symbols and data to someone, but I didn't get it. Symbols and data. Let me take this symbols and data again. So. Yes. So there is. When you take AMA, you have alphabet A in AMA, alphabet M in AMA, and another alphabet A in AMA. When you just say A, A is just A. What is A? Nothing. So A is a symbol. Now we have M symbol. So when you put A, symbol A, symbol M, and symbol A together, you get AMA. But let me say, when I just entered, we started the class, I said AMA. It doesn't mean anything. So that is the data. The AMA, the alphabet put together is the data. And the, sing, the alphabet or the numbers or the signs are the symbols. So when you put the symbols together, you get a data. When you put the data together, it makes meaning. If when you put the data together to make meaning, then you get information. I hope it's fine. Yeah, so data is raw facts and figures. Godfrey, thank you. So simple. So data is raw facts and figures. So it doesn't have any meaning. Just have the facts. Like you have the, the figures. It doesn't make any meaning. What can we do to prevent misinformation? That is very important. So Obed is asking what they can do to prevent misinformation. If you want to prevent misinformation, you should make sure you choose your information sources correctly, just so that you know you are getting the right, you have the right source of information. So you just met someone at the end, you entered the University of Ghana and you met a security man and you're asking the security man when your classes will start. Then the security man will tell you that your classes will start on Saturday evening, 7.30. Then you also, you also be waiting till Saturday 9 p.m. before you start your class. Is that a right source that you chose? No, because the security, the security man, then later you come to the department or after you've missed series of lectures, you've missed series of classes, then you come to the department and say, oh, they said the class is on Saturday 9 p.m. But you've not been seeing any class. That is when you'll be told, you'll know that you didn't ask the right person. So you need to get the right source of information. Wherever you are getting the information from, know who the person is or the source that the person is speaking from before you just consume. Else you'll be consuming any information that you get, whether right or wrong. Okay, so Eugene, you have a question. Please let's have you. You just take Eugene, you see if and Hamida, then we are done. Eugene, please, let's have your question. Hello, Eugene. Yes, please, I don't have a question. Oh, okay, then your hand is raised, please. Uh, oh, okay. And please, yes, please. okay. So, Hamida, let's have your question. Hello, Hamida, let's have your question. Hello, Hamida. Hello. Yes, let's have your question. Madam. Yes, please. 
Your hand is raised. You want to have Hello. it? Yes. Madam, please, you said tangible information are information that can be showed and touched. But in, I said, uh, hello, madam. Yes, we are listening to you. I said it was stated in the examples as information, tangible information mm -hmm. are the information that can be filled and touched. But in the example, you made mention of compact decks, which I don't understand why it's a tangible information. Okay, so it's the tangible like, information that are classified as, as a thing. So you see, you talked about compact decks. You can have access to mm -hmm. some of the CDs. You you can see that unless I I don't <laughs> I don't there is a different form of CDs that you you can the, the, um, you can't see. But there are CDs that you you see and have access to. So let me take you back to the slide so that. Okay. Please, the rest of you, please leave your comment, your questions in the comments chat session so that we will just respond to them and we will leave. We are, I think we've exceeded the one hour 30 minutes. Please hold on for us. Let me. Locate the slides in. Hamida, please locate the slides for me, okay? The slide number. So that we easily search for it. Okay, while well, Hamida is looking for the slides, let me look for, let me respond to the other question. Okay, so we have it. So you see, we have documents that these are categories of information. So we have, we have documents in books format. So there is a book, or let's say the curriculum mathematics that we use, or for those who did elective maths, the A plus elective maths books that you use, or the profound math and science, math, uh, science books that you use. You see, it has information in that book. Information is in that book. So until you get that book, you can't access the information. So that is the tangible. So until you get that, you can't access the information. So that is why they are saying it's it's regarded as a thing. So it's something you can see, you can touch. So you see, you can touch that prof book. You can touch that acula mat or sign. You can touch the newspaper that you bought from the in the morning when you were coming to school. So that is the tangible category of information. I mean that please let me know if it's fine, it's clear. Oh yeah. So you see, you can have information on your compact disk and you can get hold of the compact disk and access the information. Okay, it seems there are no further questions. There are no further questions, so. Please, is there any other further question? Yes, please, we started a class around 1.30, no, 1.50. So we, we proceeded like two hours already. So please, we would just make this available so that you can access it and you you can go over it whenever you want. But please do well to do that within the week, just so that 
we can, when this is done, we can continue with the next one. The class is supposed to be at 3.30. So we, from our next, our next session will be at 3.30, but not today, please. You will just make this up, this one available to you. It's 3 already, so we just make it available to you at 3.30. Thank you very much for joining. And if you watch the pre-recorded session, the recorded session and you have any comments, you can leave it on the WhatsApp platform. It will be open for you to, bring in your comments or you leave it under the video when you watch it. If you don't have access to the video, go to YouTube, type INFS 111 lecture video. You would see, get access to the video. If you don't have access to the slides too, go to the group WhatsApp platform and then access it. You will go to documents, you get them there. So thank you all very much. And do have a very lovely evening. Please, you can start leaving.